Hey, what's going on fellow stable diffusers? So I said in the last video that I wanted to make a video specifically about the extension control net. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've got automatic 1111 pulled up behind me here. And uh, we've got a, gone ahead and got an image loaded in. And we're going to try and convert this picture right here of this girl sitting in a grassy field. I just got this off of Pexels, um, which is a free stock photo website. Um, and we're gonna try and convert her to where she's, you know, sitting on the beach or something, something simple. And we'll go through that process. I'm gonna try and showcase a lot of the different preprocessors and models to give you guys an idea of what those look like. And we can kind of see which ones are gonna work best for our specific purpose here. So go ahead and load up your stable diffusion and then select your model checkpoint. For this one, I'm gonna be using Deliberate V2. This is a model checkpoint that I tend to prefer. Um, choose your preferred sampling method. If you guys want me to do you know, a video where we kind of go through and compare the different sampling methods, we can definitely do that as well. Um, 20 is usually fine. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 30 though. And then for the height, we're gonna probably wanna try and replicate the dimensions of this image here. And so, we don't really have to, but if we want to kind of get a one-to-one -one look, which I like to do a lot, we're going to want to try and closely match the uh, the image dimensions here in the ratio. And so one quick way I like to do that, and it's not super quick, but one way I do like to do that is come over to image to image and just go ahead and drop the image in image to image. And then what I'll do is just drag this slider to where I get the box, just to kind of get an idea of what's sort of working. And it looks like... So this image is going to be a little tall at 776. Um, that's actually going over our 768 like I talked about in the previous video. We kind of like to try and keep it at 768 or below for the initial generation. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it there. It's going to be a little off dimension, but it shouldn't crop it just too, too much. So we should be all right. But that's a that's a good way to sort of get an idea of, you know, what dimensions you need to be using at least on this initial generation, to keep it in the range that Stable Diffusion is comfortable with. Let's go ahead and set our text to image tab back over here again to 768. And I like to batch these out like I discussed in the last video. So we're gonna raise that batch up to four. And okay, let's go ahead and we're going to enable control net since we're gonna be using that. And I guess since this is a control net video, let's go ahead and talk about all of the different things we've got going on here. So this is where you can add your image. Of course, you need to enable it um, in order to actually run it. If you guys can't see this, it may just be hidden under this uh, little collapsible thing here. So you'll want to enable it and show it there. Um, I think the image is still in there. It's not showing, so let's go ahead and just drop it back in just to be sure. Okay, so this is the enable box. Um, if you check this, obviously that runs it. If you've got a low VRAM GPU, you might want to check this. Um, I'm running on a 4090, so we should be all right. But if you've got something that's like, you know, eight gigs or lower, you might consider checking this box. Pixel Perfect is a new checkbox that was added with ControlNet version 1.1, which you can see I'm running up here, 1.1.150. Um, what this does is it automatically sets the annotator resolution for processing these images. And it'll it'll help it to, um, you don't have to try and decide or manually set your annotator resolution. Whereas before you would set that typically to the, the length of the shortest side of your image. So we'll go ahead and check that and it can select that annotator resolution for us, which is great. The allow preview checkbox is pretty handy if you wanna sort of go through and get an idea for what your settings are looking like. So let's go ahead and enable that. That's gonna be great for this video to show off a couple of the different models and sort of what kind of image they're pre-processing to uh, then send to Stable Diffusion to kind of guide your image creation. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. We'll look at those in a second. Um, I wanna to continue to run through this menu real quick. So here's our pre-processors. There's quite a few now, um, a lot of different choices and they work with different models over here. And with 1.1 on ControlNet, they've tried to match the name here with the model over here. And I have some older models in here before you guys get confused. These are um, earlier versions of ControlNet. I need to go ahead and remove these from my folder. I have not yet. 
um, what we're going to be looking at is these version 1.1 models. Those are the ones we're going to want to be using. So you would select those here, and then this little button right here will actually run the preprocessor. Again, we'll get to that in just a second. Your control weight, so this is an important one right here. Um, whenever you're running your image generations, and we'll show more of this later as well as we work through this image, but your control weight, that's basically how much do you want Stable Diffusion to consider your image right here as you're running your generations. Um, you have options between zero and two. Um, pretty typically when I'm doing image generation in my workflow, I'll stick to one or lower. Uh, over two can get sort of kind of weird sometimes, but there may be, you know, instances where you want that. So we can play around with that later. Starting control step, that's going to be, okay, where do I want Stable Diffusion to start considering my image that I've loaded into ControlNet? Um, I typically start this at zero. I want it to start guiding from the very start. And then you can come over to ending control step and one is obviously that's going to be if you have it set to one that's going to be 100 percent of your steps that you're generating up here so sampling steps so all 30 steps it will be considering this image right here um whereas if you set it to like 50 percent basically is how you can think of this decimal at 15 steps it'll cut off and then it'll just generate on its own without the guidance of the image so that's sort of what we've got going on with starting and ending control step. This control mode down here for control net 1.1, this is new. This was previously guess mode, and they have now split it out into balanced, which considers both your prompt and just what control net is seeing. And then obviously this is, okay, my prompt is more important, like it says, or control net is more important. What control net is seeing is more important. So you have a play with that. I tend to stick to balanced, but you can check out and see what those different things do for whatever image you're trying to generate. And then you have your resize mode. Um, pretty typically, I just leave this on crop and resize. It tends to work the best. Um, I have not messed with loopback too much, to be honest. But what that's going to do is it's going to take the image that was generated by ControlNet, you know, you'll, it'll take whatever we generate over here and then it's gonna run it back through and do it again, but with that generated image as the guide for control net to sort of like double down on whatever you're creating. So that's sort of the rundown of what we have going on with just the general overview of control net. This batch thing is new. I haven't messed with that too much, so we're not gonna get into that in this particular video since this is just sort of an intro tutorial to control net. So we'll come back to single image and you'll see right here I'm on control net unit zero, control net unit one and control net unit two are just additional control net things that you're running simultaneously if you want. So you can stack multiple ones on top. So say you want to do a depth model on this one and then you also want to couple that with a canny model and then also couple that with like an HED model or open pose or something like that. You can stack them and this is enabled in the settings. If you come over to settings and go to control net, you can put how many multi control net um, amounts you want. Right now, I've got it set to three, that zero, one, and two that we saw. So you can change that here and have a play with it. It does require a restart of your UI in order to enable that. So, all right, let's get into generating the image of this woman on the beach, or we'll try to generate an, an image of a woman on the beach sort of in the same pose. Okay, so in order to get started with generating our image here, obviously we need to come back up and we need to begin prompting. Okay, so we've got our prompt filled out. This will be our, our positive prompt, just something like this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple things to the negative prompt too. And now we're ready to run a batch. Well, first actually we need to select our preprocessor processor and our model. So we'll start with Canny. Canny is a really good one. I like Canny a lot. I use it pretty frequently. You can see here we have a nice little Canny image. And now let's run a batch of Canny images. And I'll show you guys what kind of image this generates when using a control net with Canny with our prompt here. So we'll let this run. And here we go. As you can see with the Canny map, we have now generated, instead of being in a field of flowers, we have got a woman who is on the beach. 
And we've got her at sunset. She's sitting in the sand instead of on the grass. So that's sort of what the canny model does. You can see it, it's pretty well put her in a similar pose. We have some, you know, it's taken the, the flowers she was holding and just turned them into some background grasses on the beach, that kind of thing. You can see she's pretty well wearing almost the exact same tank top that the woman in the original image is wearing. So control net is super powerful. I think we've showcased the the power of control net. If you guys would like to see a, a separate video that just runs through all of these just kind of pretty quickly without explanation, let me know in the comments and I can definitely get that made. We'll just run through and check all of these out and see what they make. And uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, as you can see, this is this is the power of control net. You, you have the ability to pretty much one-to-one -one match sort of the image. So we'll say we like this one a lot. And then you can you can run through um a process where you you know send this over to extras and upscale it and then you can you can, or you can in paint it to clean it up, whatever. But this is this is the power of of control net. It's just such a powerful tool. If you're not if you haven't checked this extension out, um there's a lot going on like I just showed, but hopefully this kind of cleared it up a little bit for you guys. And you can get in here and you can kind of play around with some of the settings and really get to uh, generating compositionally the images that you were looking for. So let me know if this was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to drop a like and, you know, comment any questions you've got, comment any suggestions you have for something you might want me to run through in another video. And yeah, have fun diffusing some photos and I'll see you on the next one.